Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilke Jan Biesma and I am an orchid grower from the Netherlands. And today I think we have a, a very nice care collaboration again because we're going to talk about these big beauties behind me, the Vendas, the Vendas General Care. And I really was looking forward to this because uh, I really enjoy uh, growing Vendas. Even though my climate is not that warm most of the times, I think uh, overall they are doing fine. Well, actually I should say they're doing better because last year I tried them in terracotta pots with um, lava rock, but it didn't turn out very well for me because in winter I cannot spray them as often because then we will have some water in between the leaves and that is getting too cold and etc. So I turned them back into glass faces, which uh, that method I used for years and I really had good results. So um, this method suits me very well, but I changed it because it also uh, gets very dirty quite quickly in the vases, as you can see here. And especially in summer, we will have a lot of algae going on. So I thought, well, maybe I can find a solution to do not have to deal with the algae as much as I used to. But I tried it, they didn't do well. Luckily, I didn't lose any Vanda, but there were, were some uh, that really were around the edge of surviving or not. And uh, so, yeah, um, but I, I, they are still there. We have one that's bouncing back, but it's not as beautiful. And uh, we will have a look at that one uh, as well. But yeah, basically glass faces. That is just uh, how I grow them uh, the best. And uh, as you can see, I have them uh, rebloomed. Can you see it? No, I'm sorry. It's a little bit out of frame, but this is the first beautiful rebloom again. I think this is the white angel. And even though it could have a little bit better roots, it starts to grow some roots again. So I think it will uh, do better. But yeah, finally we have at least some blooms again and a spike that is uh, pretty enough to be, uh, to be watched, I should say, before this. Uh, this one did bloom as well, but it, the blooms are very small. I think they can be a little bit bigger, but then uh, again, the orchid is not as its best yet. But it's rebouncing, so that's uh, beautiful. And I also have, while well, we have it in frame, I glue these uh, knitting sticks, basically uh, our uh, knitting tools, knitting sticks. I don't know uh, exactly how to call them, but these are um, glazed with something. Uh, so they uh, do not uh, get rusty or anything. And I get the cheap ones because those are hollow inside. So I could extend this uh, stick the stake with with a wooden stake because that one, uh, wood will fit in and it will not start to mold getting mold uh, as well and i just use clear um, glue to glue it on it's a glue for uh, especially made for glass glass surfaces i, I could lift it uh, from this because this one could take quite some glue but this face is fairly straight if you have some curves in it yet yeah, it gets a little bit more tricky um, I have one here as well, it's a big one. Let me uh, show you that very quickly. And then we will uh, get into the care more. Um, I just bended this one a little bit. As you can see here, whoops, that's the roof. Here's a little bit of a curve there. So yeah, I bend it, the knitting stick, stick a little bit and then it uh, shoot it as well. So. Yeah, you will find it. It's not very, very pretty, but it's very ha uh, helpful and handy. And as you can see, this one I extended with a wooden, uh, more regular plant stake. So because this is my biggest, largest fenda, and it had has quite some uh, some keikis. It had ten, but I don't know if they all uh, made it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six that I can see seven, yeah, quite a lot of keikis. A few did uh, die off, but yeah, what, what, what's there to be expected when uh, a vendor gives 10 keikis at the same time. So seven is a pretty nice. Um, so yeah, that's about the glass faces. And of course, before we go any further, let's put it back. 
I would like to mention the other participants. I was already, and really was looking forward uh, to share uh, this co uh, co collaboration with you guys. But uh, of course, I want to mention the other participants for this video. And you will now have them in the screen in a picture. So we can look at the names of the uh, participants. And as usual, I have their links in my video description. So if you like, uh, you can check their videos out as well. And I highly uh, suggest you do, because then you can compare the uh, care that we give to the vendors. And if you want it, you can apply it uh, to your situation. Or uh, maybe get some ideas if you have vendors maybe for years and you do f uh, fine, you may have some ideas to, uh, for probably to change something, something like that. So I have them in glass faces. That means that they need to be watered. Well, obviously they need to be watered always. But um, what I now can do is I water them for one day and um, then I will fill up the vases just uh, just beneath where the Venda, the, the actual stem of the Venda starts. So we will not have rot there, but the roots, I try to get the roots as much in water as I can. And I leave them um, in that water for at least 24 hours. But most times it's up to 30 hours, something like that. And then I um, get the water out. So that's a little bit of a test because they are very heavy, but I have to uh, put them upside down, get the water out. And then... Um, I spray them the other days. In winter, I don't have to spray them as much, but in summer, I will spray them almost daily, every other day. So I keep the roots fairly moist. Not wet, they dry up, but then I wet them again. So that's basically what I'm doing. So we will now have a look at how I prepare the water, and then uh, I will take it from there. So for my vendors, I need two of these blue big containers of water. And I have RO water here in this uh, rain barrel. So every, uh, most of the times, every Saturday, uh, like I said, I fill up two of these buckets. And then I add my fertilizer. And this is basically what I use. They always get a bit of Calmac. And I really love the brand of this, the BioBiz. And the Calmac is around, I think, 80 parts per million, something like that. Then we have some rain mix. Um, that's around 100 parts per million I think and I like if it, the, it's a very sunny day I like to add this fertilizer within as well it's 202020 as you can see for the extra nitrogen um, can be also around 80 to 100 uh, parts per million depends depends on winter or summer in uh, winter, they, I give it get, uh, give it a bit less, and most of the times I skip this one because the weather is not as bright. But when they really start to, to grow, they need the nitrogen as well. And if you start using extra calcium, you will uh, try to back up it, back up that amount of calcium with the nitrogen. So if you have 80 percent or 80 parts per million, I should say, Calmec, I like to use at least. Um, 60 uh, parts per million uh, as nitrogen as well. So I try to balance that a little bit because they, this is when they start to grow the nitrogen and this is to make it st strong, those new growth. So I, you need to balance between the, those two a little bit. And every two weeks, I at least give them uh, some uh, alga mix. It's algae, it's uh, seaweed actually, I should say. Also from Biobis and every two weeks and in winter it might be every three weeks but um, yeah, in summer every two weeks I do give a little bit of uh, uh, seaweed as well and that's around 20 to 30 parts per million per watering so these are the basic fertilizers that I use and I, I'm really happy with uh, how they react and respond to uh, this mix so two of the uh, blue containers uh, will give me this amount of water. This is a very large container, but it's very heavy. So I already uh, install it here and then I fill it up with those blue ones. Otherwise I couldn't lift this anymore. But um, yeah, this is the water already prepared. And uh, the calcium does give that brownish color to it. Sometimes the uh, kelp, the seaweed as well. But most of the times it's the, uh, of the, yeah, the most discoloration here is from the uh, Calmac. So then I pH it and I like to pH it around 6 to uh, 
and uh, yeah like I said depending on winter or summer this now is about 250 parts per million because we're starting to getting um, towards uh, spring and today it's a very nice clear day and tomorrow as well uh, at least that's what the uh, forecast um, um, says so I think uh, they will be right because we like the sunny days <laughs> and then I feed them a little bit more 250 something like that it is very dull day I go uh, up to 200 and in summer we will add uh, more fertilizer uh, up to 350 to 400 parts per million because these are very big orchids so they really need the feed and um, yeah, so far the smaller ones over here do appreciate a little bit more fertilizer in summer as well. But especially these guys, if you think about it, how much uh, they need to support, they really need to feed to do that. So all those leaves and the spikes, uh, you can see here it's a little bit dark, but all those beautiful blooms, they all need to be built from something, so we need to, uh, to give them... Uh, that a fertilizer and uh, then the plants will do the rest of course so now it's time to uh, fill up the, the glass faces so we have the water prepared so let's grab a venda and i will grab this white beauty again <laughs> um oh let me put it on this naughty bench someone called this the naughty bench the orchid naughty bench so i can Hold it a little bit better. If it, yes, I'm in frame, so I just grab some water and I pull it over the roots and slowly fill up the face. And like I said, to the level that's just underneath the structure. And then we put it back at the shelf like this and then we grab another one. So let's uh, grab the one that is not doing the best. It's this one, it's my Blue Magic. The very, very beautiful blooms. Probably my, my favorite, it's, the blooms are stunning. So if I have some pictures, I will show them to you guys. But you can see this one is uh, very dehydrated because of my experiment. But it's coming back, luckily. So. Um, well, the same situation, I fill up the vase just around where the axle venda starts. Uh, but I only have the roots in water. So I hope you can see it. It's a little bit of uh, water here and like I said, only the, the roots need to be uh, in contact with the water. And then the vendor will, uh, will do with the rest by itself. Let me put this back on the shelf. So this is how it looks when they uh, have all the water in. As you can see here, I hold the level of the water. Not too high, only the roots. You only want the roots in the water. This is the one that isn't doing so well. So I try to uh, give these aerial roots also a chance to wetten up. But the wick is not really working, sadly. I think it's a little bit too long, too far away from the water. Maybe that's a problem. So I need to uh, find an other wig, but it, it's starting to grow and you can see it's leaning over because this stake I did tape with, uh, with tape. As you can see, some duct tape residue there. So I need to glue this one and very quickly because it starts to grow again and now it's really bending and I don't like the look of that. Um, so yeah, here are my other ones. And this is the second biggest one. It's a very strong, oops, I'm sorry. Very strong, beautiful yellow Vanda. It's one of my favorites as well. And it has a beautiful cakey growing. And luckily it starts to put out quite some roots again. I hope you can see them, new root tips. So this one is really uh, coming back to, uh, to life again, luckily. <laughs> So yeah, this year I think they will do way better than last year in their clay pots. Then I don't dance on the Anna. We did a care collab on this one not that long ago. And these are also enjoying their water. So obviously I have my vendors growing in the, inside of my greenhouse. And this greenhouse is facing uh, uh, south to southwest. 
So in summer it uh, can get very uh, hot in here, um, but I found last year at least it worked. I put, I opened the door up for my greenhouse and I put a fan directly in the in the door, and that pulls uh, air from outside and blows it in. And that really worked last year to keep it a little bit nice here. Otherwise it will get up to 40 degrees something. And even on these days where it's uh, outside isn't uh, a high temperature yet, I think it's now around five degrees. So that's not very, uh, very warm. But in here, because of the sun, it gets to up to 30 very quickly. And uh, the vendors uh, do uh, really like that, but you don't have to go overboard. So that's how I regulate the temperatures. And in winter, I have my heaters on. And it's, uh, it's always around 18. They start to uh, blow uh, hot air in uh, when it gets underneath 18 degrees. So I always keep it around 18 in, uh, at night. And then it depends on the day. If we have a very bright day, even if it's winter, the sun will shine and the, the temperature rises quite quickly. And personally, I love it. I really like the warmer weather. But anyhow, these guys uh, do uh, like that as well. Um, so, um, yeah, this is basically a little bit uh, uh, of, of no, yeah, not, not a little bit. This is basically the care that I give them. And um, yeah, it's not 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 really hard. But the downside of the faces are for me, uh, obviously the algae growth. I really, uh, really hate the algae growth. And it can be a bit hard uh, to manage the glass faces, especially when they are filled with water. This one and that one, yeah, it's still in frame. These are the two biggest vendors and those faces are the biggest. They are quite heavy. Um, I can lift them. But I need some room here because I need to tilt them upside down to get the water out. So that might be something to take in consideration. You can work with maybe with a, a little hose and then try to get the water out. But I try that and yeah, this is uh, way easier. So that's, uh, that's how I do it. But something to uh, keep in mind if you start growing them like this. So I think I covered uh, everything and, uh, that I can think of uh, care-wise. But still, if you have any questions, of course, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video and other videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you have any suggestions, I would like to hear them as well. So thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.